morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Amen. I'll be reading from the book of Psalms this morning, Psalms 1 in its entirety. Amen. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way of sinners. Amen, amen. Take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields fruit in season, and those whose leaf does not wither. Whoever they do, whatever they do, prosper. Not so the wicked. They are like a shaft that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in judgment, yes. nor the sinners in the assembly of righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, and the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Amen.
heaven right now. Yes, yes. Thank you this morning, praise and worship team. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap for our praise. Standing on post. Amen. On post. 
He's being an usher. An usher. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. This is Pat McCree. I see you back there with your young hair flowing down. Looking good. He's an usher. This is fun. This is James. Did I say it right? Amen. Amen. He's an usher this morning. Somebody said, I'd rather be a, a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. They're the ones that make all the difference. Before anybody ever comes in here, hears anybody sing or preach, they are met by the ushers at the door. Or urchin, depending on where you are. <laughs> they're met by them. And if the urchins don't have their attitude and they're not lifted up and ready to worship and praise and then bless this house, then most of the time people come in and urchins say, oh, where you going to sit at? <laughs> Take that gun out of your mouth. All right, you can't be sitting next to them. You need to have your mask on, as they tell me. Pastor, you got your mask on. And we thank God for our urchins Amen. and our urchins as well. Have to the doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. Amen. We really have a great group, a great group of people that are here to serve God. Amen. And I count it as an honor to be able to serve you. Amen. Amen. I count it as an honor. Because truly, that's what ministry is about. Ministry is not grabbing the mic and, and shaking your leg, you know. It's not about singing and hitting that high note up there and everybody passing out or waving the fan. That's not ministry. Ministry, and that can be ministry, but ministry is how do I serve? Yes, yes. How do I serve? How do I commit myself to the will of God? Or submit myself to the will of God? And for many of us, that's very difficult. Because some of us don't like people. And so we don't want to serve anybody, and we don't want nobody to serve us. But God has brought us to this place of being grateful. Amen. Let me just tell you, after all that I've been through, I'm grateful. Amen. I'm grateful. Just for the little things. Mm. Just for the little things. I promise not to be before you not too long. <laughs> we'll put my glasses on and take a look where I have my watch. Okay, it's 920 or 919 by my watch. But I just want to mention a couple of things to you. We are still having Bible class on Wednesday night Amen. at 7 p.m. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. This is a that. All right. But if you want to be rooted and grounded in the Lord, mm -hmm. you've got to go to Bible class. Amen. You've got to get the word in you. That's David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Yes, you. With all those targets and all those things are thrown at you. Mm -hmm. Those spears, those arrows, those compact submachine guns are shot at you through trials and tribulations. You've got to have some word in you. Amen. Oh, I'm talking to myself this morning. You've got to have some word in you where you can stand. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. So let's start with Sunday school. And we're, we're going to get back there to Sunday school. Amen. But Bible class. Bible class. And what's so interesting about Bible class, I'm going to get to the word in a minute. Don't get excited. <laughs> what's so good about Bible class is you can actually have a discussion about how you see life, but how the word of God points you towards, points you towards what God wants you to be, to fulfill yeah. your purpose. Yeah. Amen. To fulfill your purpose. And then you'll find out that there are other people that are thinking and going through some of the same things that you have been going through uh -huh. and you're not living in this world alone. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so I encourage you to come to Bible study on Wednesday evening at 7. I encourage you, we just started out last week, Amen. to come to intercessory prayer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got, one per, I got one person clapping. I got one person saying yes.
Yes, sir. But let me explain this to you. We have no strength if we don't spend time in prayer. The Bible says that we should always pray and never faint. If Mount Moriah is to reach the world, we've got to be in prayer. We got to be in prayer that when you're going through something, you know that somebody is praying for you. Amen. When I'm standing up here, don't you know that the enemy is fighting me as I'm up here? So I need intercessory prayer going on. I need intercessory prayer going on for the church. I need intercessory prayer going on for those that are out there on Facebook Live. We need prayer going on in our lives 24-7. Yeah. We need people stealing away in the bathroom at work praying. Yeah. You can do so much more in your life if you just take time to pray. I know Pastor, Emeritus, myself, Pastor Cooley, I know all of us will tell you that we don't have all the answers. Pastor June, we don't have all the answers. But sometimes what it takes is you just getting into that place of prayer. Yeah. That God will begin to reveal that which has not been revealed. Yeah. It will begin to calm your spirit. Because some of us, some of us yeah. have the spirit of the age. I'm not talking about y'all, I'm just talking about me right now. <laughs> so prayer at 6 a.m. On Wednesday morning, I should have started with it. 6 a.m. and it's on Zoom, Amen. so you can actually black yourself out. You ain't gotta be seen. Your hair ain't gotta be done. You don't have to brush your teeth, so you don't have to smell nobody bad breath over the over the airways. You can come naked and unashamed. Well, don't do that. Come and just lay yourself before the Lord and pray with like-minded people. Amen. Not only from here at Mount Moriah, but across the nation. Amen. 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 So I hear amen. That means I'll be seeing some folks on prayer on, on Wednesday morning. Amen. And Bible study amen. on Wednesday night. Amen. We also have coming up on the 25th, I believe it is, and... Hold me to that, the 25th, 26th, the 25th, I believe, is a Saturday, is a Friday. Is that correct? Right. Take a look at your calendar. 25th of Friday, you think? Friday. Friday night at 6 30, we're going to have an advisory board meeting here at the church. Do it a little bit different. Normally we have a Saturday, but we're going to have a Friday evening. The reason why I'm going to give back some of your Saturdays to you, because I know that we do a lot of things on Saturday. We do the men's meeting, we do the do the ladies' meeting on Saturday. We do the deacons' meeting on Saturday. And so I want to give back some time to you that we can come together as a family on Friday night for an hour and a half and just talk about those challenges, those issues, those things that we're doing. We can plant the seed of vision and we can move forward. Because I'm excited about some things that are coming. That as I mentioned to you last time, I'm excited about our hero ministry. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about working with our first responders and uh, all of those heroes out there that are in the hospital and that are in the school. I'm excited about our prison ministry. Amen. I'm excited about going to, to those that are locked up in prison. Isn't that what it says in the 25th chapter of, of Matthew? When it talks about if you didn't visit me while I was, I was locked up, you didn't give me any food. So I'm excited about, you know, I know that these things have been here, but we're going to reestablish them. Open them back up again. I was talking with the assistant sheriff of, of San Diego County. And so all those things are, are there for us to, to do that again. There's some folks out there that have houses where they're actually taking people in and they're bringing in people and, and allowing them to stay there to get themselves uh, online. We have programs where people are being trained in specific jobs so they can, in fact, when they get out of incarceration, that they can't in fact go out and get work. Now, I know, I know people say, that ain't me, that ain't me, I ain't, I ain't never did that. But you might have did something else. Amen. And you just wouldn't call for it. Hmm. Amen. 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 The Bible says such was some of us. So we thank God for the fact that we have the opportunity not only to just walk here and live here and breathe here and breathe, but we have the opportunity to be able to bless somebody else. 
And I see somebody who needs to be blessed, who wants to be blessed in this house. Can I see the hand of somebody who wants to be blessed in this house? Here's the secret. If you want to be blessed, bless somebody else. Amen. Here's the secret. If you want to be blessed, start blessing somebody else. Amen. Bless them out of your soul. Bless them out of your prayer. Mm -hmm. Bless them out of giving them the word of God. I want to thank the, the food ministry that's here. Yesterday they served 130 some odd people. Amen. 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 Yesterday, and as I was talking with uh, the sister this morning about another program, they have an Oasis program there, that we may be able to serve even more people. Amen? Amen. I'm, I'm getting excited about what God is doing in this place. Yes. He's been doing it all alone. Mm -hmm. So it's not just because of that I'm here, it's God doing it. That's right. Pastor Tom told you the same thing. What's the fact that Pastor Tom was here? Because God has his anointing on this place. Amen. If I didn't do anything else for the rest of this day or whenever God said, Come home, Gerald, God will still use his anointing to take Mount Moriah right. and move it into where Mount Moriah is. Right. Don't ever get it twisted there. It's about me. It's not about me. It's about the Savior that we serve. Yeah. That has been good to us. Amen. 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 And so while we have this opportunity, we're going to keep on serving. Amen. Amen. Finally, I want to thank the music ministry. These folks are coming out of themselves. <laughs> These coming. Y'all notice y'all didn't see no stands up here today. I know this is going out live. Y'all didn't see no stands up here today. Amen. They're working. They, they are singing out of their hearts. Amen. And we are being blessed by it. We did a little shuffling around, a little moving around so we can get the same key, you know. But God is doing it. Yeah, we yeah. open our eyes up and we actually looking at y'all now. Amen? <laughs> Amen. What God has done in a short period of time. And if some of you think that you have the ability to sing, please see the director, Sister Cindy. All right? And let's get on up here and sing. And uh, we'll help you. Not to make a joyful noise, everybody make a joyful noise. And we will help you get to that tone, that note. Amen? Amen. In your Bibles. And we pray today, God, that you bless your word. Bless your word in the mighty way, Lord God, that it goes to, to touch somebody's heart. As Pastor America said earlier, that someone come running and saying, What must I do to be saved? In the 17th chapter of the book of St. Luke, there's a passage of scripture, and last week we talked about no more excuses. This is on from St. Luke's another parable that Jesus, not a parable, but an experience that Jesus had. And I just want to talk to you today for just a little while. In the 17th chapter of the book of St. Luke, Around about the 11th, I'm sorry, the 11th verse. And we're going to just take a few minutes. Luke in the Gospels is the one that's written two, maybe two books throughout. He's written the book of Luke. His disciple, the book of Luke and the book of Acts, about the first church. He talks about the experience of the first church, and he talks about the experience of, of Jesus. Uh -huh. Luke talks about the women that were in Jesus' life more than any other place in the gospel. He talks about their relationship and their strength, and he talks about them lifting them up and how they lifted up the message of the Lord. Dr. Luke was considered to be both a physician and he was a well-educated man. Mm. Luke was a traveler. He followed along with the Apostle Paul. When Paul went to different places, oftentimes 
Luke, he talks about Luke being there along with him. Luke was a compassionate man and he was a humble man. Just think about it if you will, that you're traveling along with the, with the greatest or one of the greatest messengers of the Bible. The man that has written probably more epistles in the New Testament than anyone else, the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. Think about it, if you're traveling with Bishop T.D. Jakes, you are his aide, you are his assistant. Deacon Liggins, it's you and T.D. together. And you know all the fame of T.D. that's going on, all the fame of Paul. Paul was known throughout. But here was Luke. Luke was quietly in the background, just writing and observing what was true. What was true. I would venture to say it would be hard for some of us. It would be very, very hard for some of us. When I met TDJ, I said, hey, man, let me get a picture with you. We make sure that we want to make sure our light was shining just as much. But you can really begin to think about those that really serve God, they are never really pushing to the front to be known of, of anybody. Mm -hmm. Let me just tell you, the, the word of God says that promotion comes neither from the north or the south or the east or the west, but it comes from where? It comes from God. So you don't have to elevate yourself or push anybody else out of the way. Mm -hmm. God's going to elevate you in his appointed time. Amen. So that's how Luke was. Luke could walk around and say, hey, don't you know I'm a physician? Don't you know I'm educated? I graduated from the Harvard of Jerusalem. You know? I've got all these multiple degrees here. You just ain't talking to some, you know, some. You talking to me. But Luke didn't do that. He took time out to, to write the truth that he saw. And so here in this 17th passage, in this 17th chapter, we see that Jesus, Jesus was always looking for someone that he could bless. And Luke records this. He says this. As he went on his way to Jerusalem, Where? it occurred that Jesus was passing along the, the border between Samaria and and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met ten men that were lepers, which stood far off. Ten men that were lepers. Leprosy was considered and still is considered one of the most contagious diseases of all time. Leprosy is almost akin to HIV AIDS. Leprosy is almost before the coronavirus can tend to the corona. Is it corona? Virus. I'm not talking about the drink like some of y'all might have went to y'all minds. <laughs> Ten men, there were men that met him. They were men, first of all. They were men that had descended from Adam. They were men who were members of the human race. They were men who God had created, and they were men with leprosy, with HIV AIDS, with coronavirus, My Lord. that Christ died for. My Lord. Just want to get that into your mind. You see that the man that is engaged in sin today, God created us. I didn't say them. He created us. And we sin, that sin is that one for whom Christ died, so that we don't forget. Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. Romans 5.8 tells us that but God committed his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, sinners mm -hmm. while we were yet sinners, mm -hmm. that Christ, Christ died for us. So yeah. these men were not just men, they were left. Because they were lepers. They couldn't enter that village, My that certain God. village. They had to stay at a farm. As he entered a certain village, there stood Moroso 
remorsefully, suddenly, resentfully, bitterly, a mob of ten men. And to the contrast, Jesus had twelve men with him. Those who were eager, happy men. They had this sad bunch over here because they were filled with sin. And you had this other over here with eager, happy men. Those who were ahead of him were a sad lot. Leprosy is an infectious disease that has been known since biblical times. It is characterized by disfigurement of skin sores, nerve damage, and progressively rehabilitation. Skin lesions are lighter mm. than your normal color. Numbness and absence of sensation in the hands, arms, and feet, and muscle weakness. So they had to stand afar from him about a hundred paces, and when Jesus was coming almost close to them, they had to cry, unclean. Let me say it again. You had to stand a hundred paces, a hundred yards away and cry, unclean. What if we had to do that today? What if we had to announce every time we walked into the place, I'm a sinner. I'm unclean. I venture to say that most of us would not do that. We'd hide away from everybody and everything. And we come in the dark of the night. Are you still with me or have you gone to sleep? Mm -hmm. They would say, Tome, Tome, unclean, unclean. Don't come near us. Isn't it interesting that we look at the Bible, the ways in which when many scholars say that it's the one most important book of the Bible, in the heart of the book of Leviticus, which is the book of worship, chapter 13, 14, and 15, all has to do with leprosy. All has to do with uncleanness. What does leprosy have to do with worship in the Word of God? It is a picture of sin, and God wants us to know that in sin, we do not worship Him. And if no man comes to him unless the sin question has been answered. Didn't come to point fingers at anyone today. I came to tell you that I was a sinner. Mm. Lost in this world. Yeah, on my way to burst open the gates of hell. Mercy, Lord, mercy. But love lifted me. Yeah. I came to tell you today not to point the fingers at anybody that we all were on that direction. I don't care if you were born in the church. Born right there in the church, your mother gave birth to you right there, they scooped you up. They washed you off, they cleansed you. You were born in sin, the Bible says, and shaped in iniquity. I know. I know this is a hard subject because we don't want to hear about sin anymore. Yeah. We want to do what we want to do, how we want to do it, when we want to do it, where we want to do it, and say it's okay. Mm. But not so with God. Yeah. We want to do it so much that we can say, well, grace it has me. The Bible says, shall we continue in sin? Can we, shall we continue in rebelliousness against the very will of God? Because that's what sin is. Sin is a rebelliousness against the will and the way of God. Are y'all in here? Oh, yeah. So Jesus comes in contact with these. And so what does the Bible tell us about the very of whom the leprosy were? It does tell us that one was a Samaritan of these ten. Now the question is, how did this guy get in there? Is it true that Jews had no dealing with the Samaritans, and the Samaritans had no dealing with the Jews? Yes, that's true. Then how did we get this cat in there? Yes. 
of this ten, there was a Samaritan. And I don't know if y'all knew this, right? But Samaritans were people of color. So wherever you go, when you see a group, there's usually a black guy there. Hmm. Usually a black guy there. And so the Samaritans were people of color. And they were hooked up with the Jews. And the Jews usually didn't have anything to do with Samaritans. We don't want nothing to do with them. They ain't our folks. Who are they? You understand? We Jews. We don't associate with the Palestine. We don't associate with the Arabs. Yeah. We Jews. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, all of them recognized that they were all bound by one thing. And that was leprosy. Mm -hmm. Sin makes strange bedfellows. Sin will bring in people that you never thought that you would deal with. All of a sudden, because of sin, you'd be hanging with the wrong home. And the home that won't even be a home. Sin will make you conspire with people that you don't like. And they don't like you. Just so you can get somebody else. Oh, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. And so the old Samaritan leper was hanging out. And along came these Jews. And they had leprosy and said, let's not forget the fact that you are having Samaritans and we are Jews, for we are all have leprosy. Uh -huh. The Apostle Paul said in Romans 3 and 9, what then? Are we better than they? Three. No, in no way. For we have before proven both Jew and Gentile that they are all under sin. No matter if you're white, no matter if you're black, no matter if you're Hispanic or Mexican, it doesn't matter if you're Jew, it doesn't matter who you are. We have all been covered from Adam under sin. Amen. You see, they heard about Jesus. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on mercy. Us. Has there been ever a time in your life? As you've gone on your life, and you ain't got to tell me here. You ain't got to tell me now. But there's some place and some time in your life where you have to throw up your hands and say, Jesus, Lord, I can't do this. Help me. Have mercy on me. See, I know that even though all y'all look good walking in here today, that you got your hair better than you ever been before. Mother will tell you, you got your nice dress on. You got your African outfit on. You got all your white on. But it ain't always been that way. Amen. At some point along our lives, you had to cry out, Jesus, Jesus Master, Lord, Lord help me. Yes. Because I can't do it by myself. That's right. It might have been an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. Might not have been hitting you, but it might have been tearing your mind up. Might have had you doubting about yourself and who you were. Well, Jesus, Master, yeah. help me. Yeah, you might have been out there on drugs, on alcohol, fighting those demons from the past. Not having to learn how to leave the past in the past. Mm -hmm. Had to learn how to fight in the Holy Spirit yet. Jesus, yeah. Master, yeah. help me. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. You might have already ascended and got your degree. Hmm. You might have thought you were making it along the way. Yeah. Free, free, but you free. found out no matter how, how many degrees you had, how much money that you had, mm -hmm. that it wasn't enough. Free. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. Master, Man. help me. Hmm. Have mercy on me. Yes. You see, they heard about Jesus. Wow. They heard that he healed. A man with leprosy, hmm. over in Mark the first chapter. A man with leprosy who came to him and begged him on his knees. He said, if you are willing, wow. you can make it be clean. Mm -hmm. Bible says that filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand yeah. and touched the man. And Jesus said, I am willing, 
I am willing for you to be clean. Yeah. One interpretation said, would you, would you make me whole? And he says, you are made whole. I don't know what you're going through today. But let me just say to you that God is willing, that Jesus is willing to make you whole. Oh, he is willing to make you clean. Come on, man. He is willing to meet you where you are. Amen. And here's what the Bible says that when God does this, when his son reaches out to you, he said immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. Yes. It wasn't no going back and forth. It wasn't no maybe if, uh, okay. <laughs> but when God does it, it's done. Mm -hmm. It's done. That is a difficult task for us to comprehend because we want to see some other things happen. We want to hear some whistles and some bands and everything else, right? But when God says that you are healed, yeah. back over the Old Testament, the statement was, whose report will you believe? Hmm. I'm talking to somebody out there in Facebook land now. Somebody's come and prayed for you, and they said you healed. I'm not telling you that you don't go to your doctor, mm -hmm. but go to your doctor with the faith that I'm healed. Yeah. I'm healed in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm healed. I can walk and talk. I know this says cancer over here, yeah. but I'm healed. Amen. I know I feel pain in my body, but I'm healed. Yeah. I know they say that I need some more medication for my mind, but I'm healed. Yeah. Because we'll get locked into that place where the devil will take you. The devil will tell you, ain't nothing happening. Hmm. Oh, my Hmm. Let me just tell you, God changes not. Hmm. Do you believe that? Yes. He is the same today, yes. tomorrow, hmm. and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. And if he says that you're healed, you're healed. Amen. Amen. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was cured. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong woman. Warning. See that you tell this to, to no one. See that you don't tell anyone. You know, I'm just going to say this to y'all. I told people before don't tell anything. And guess what they did? They told. They told. Them. But if I was healed or something, I ain't telling nobody. But Jesus said, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifice that Moses commanded, for you are cleansing, cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news as a result. Jesus could no longer enter the town openly, but stayed outside in the lonely places. Jesus, have mercy. The need is great. I know that you've heard about Jesus. I know that your mind goes back and forth. Mm -hmm. But we have a Savior that has healed the lame. Mm -hmm. yes. He's healed the lame, the lame walk. Mm -hmm. He's healed the blind. The blind see. Mm -hmm. yes. He put words in the mouth of the mute. Yes. The mute talks. Mm -hmm. This is the God that we serve. This is the God that we serve. I don't know about you, saints of God, but I'm looking yet at miracles. Amen. We're located right here now. We're in this place, and outside these doors, there's five miracles that happen every day. Amen. And we don't even know anything about it. Yes. There's miracles that happen in your life that you don't know about. Well. All you saw that car zoom around you, and you didn't hit it.
quickly. Amen. Uh, there's a sound like two minutes. I'll go on anyway. Yeah. And so instead he went and began to freely talk, spread the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter the town openly. So these lepers said, if you have an opportunity to get to Jesus, so every wall of attention is broken down. They cried, Jesus, have mercy on us. I'm up under this mindset. If you saw the dead rise, then you'd be rushing towards the door. I'm up under that mindset. If you saw a person get up and start walking, that you'd be rushing towards the door, trying to get into the house of the Lord. If we said I had a million dollars, people would be rushing to the door trying to get into the house of the Lord. Hmm. Well, we have more than that. Amen. We have the spirit of almighty God in this place. Hmm. And when you're in the presence, and this is what I talk to the worship team about, and what their job and their responsibility is, is to take us into that presence of Almighty God. Yes. When you get into the presence of Almighty God like these lepers wanted to, when you see Jesus, well, when you see Jesus, you know there's a party going on. People can pile up in front of you. Yes, yes. But just like the woman with the issue of blood, mm -hmm. when you have a need from Almighty, mm -hmm. you're going to break through all of those folks. Nobody's going to be able to stop you Free. from getting to Jesus. Yes, yes sir. Amen. But somewhere along this time, we've seen over the last year all of these people die. Uh-huh. And yet you're alive. Yes. Yes. Out there in Facebook land and, and uh -huh. the streaming, nothing should be stopping you from getting to the house of God right now. Yes. Come on. You should be breaking through the doors to get to the house of God. Because there's nothing else that has kept you. Nothing that has kept you over this time yes. except for God. Amen. And so when it comes down to, to me coming in the house of God, I'm going to bust through these chairs and I'm going to get to Jesus. Amen. Every Sunday morning, every time the church door is open up, I'm going to send them back myself. I, I promise you, I'll put them back. All right. I'm going to do my best to get to Jesus. You're not going to stop me from getting to Jesus. Amen. These ten, these ten lepers, filled with the problems and the issues of the world, mm -hmm. cried out, "Jesus, Master, have mercy on us." Yes. They didn't get so comfortable in, in, in this, but well, we're going to die anyway. Mm -hmm. Why do you call it in for? Why don't we just go ahead and lay here and die? You know, Corona going to get us. The saints of God, we must have a determination. A determination is that I'm going to get to Jesus any way I possibly can. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not going to let all the hell stop me. Amen. I'm going to break through. This message is the case of the missing now. I've got some more to go through there. I'm not going to get all of it today. But we're going to talk about those 10 uh, lepers. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about each one of them. Because each one of them, even though they cut in through, and let me just tell you, I'm going to summarize right now. Even though they came through, Jesus did what Jesus do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you do, Jesus? I heal. Lord. Jesus did what Jesus did. I'm summing it. Summing it up. But I'm coming back to you. He's in the business to heal it. He's in the business. Thank you, Deacon. I love
level with somebody to preach with me. I really do. He's in the business of healing. Yes, he is. And so he did what he knew. Amen. I know that bad will. I know that bad is. But he did. They came to him and he healed them. All ten of them. And then he said, go show yourself to the priest. Mm -hmm. yes. He told them to do this. Go show yourself. And they started making excuses. Mm -hmm. Why they couldn't do it? Yes. Well, you know, before I got leprosy, I was going to get married. And I've been away from her for a long time. Mm -hmm. So I think I need to go on and go back there and, and see her and see if she feel, you know, if she will still marry me. I'm all healed to do now. You know, got a pair of shoes on. <laughs> Sometimes I got to laugh at this myself. Okay. This is the word. The word doesn't say this, but there's an inference to it. Yes. One said he left his, his, his parents. One said he had to do this. And we'll go, go through all that. One said the world had forsaken him, so why are you going to go back? None of them, except for one, came back and said, thank you. That's cool. Going out from Wednesday Bible study about what are we grateful for. Us. I came in on the end of it, I was listening. About being grateful. One came back and said, I just want to come back after the other nine gave you excuses. We'll go through that next week. I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Yes. Thank you, Lord. My children walked out on me. My wife walked out on me. My dog left. <laughs> Couldn't find no food. I had to eat out of the trash can. I had to get up unclean wherever I went. But thank you, Lord. You stopped. You heard my cry. And while the others were calling, did not pass me by. Amen. 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 You didn't pass me by. I was a rough neck. Hard hearted. I wasn't going to forgive anybody. But in those moments, God, you forgave me for everything that I thought of. You forgave me. Lord, I just want to come back and say I'm grateful. Yes, yes, yes. I'm grateful mm. that you do what you do. Mm. Amen. My Lord. That you save me. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus saved me. Mm. Yes, yes. Amen. To the utmost. Yes, he does. Jesus saved me. That's what the songwriter says. But that's what I know. But you see, you might not say this of yourself, but I was a leopard. I was a leopard. Covered in sin. The sins of this world. I was a liar. I was a cheat. Backstab, a murderer of dreams and aspirations. I was angry. I was all of that. But Jesus said, mm, Amen. And I know just like He did it for me, mm -hmm. He'll do it for you. Mm, I know. If you want Him to. He ain't going to force you. That's what a gracious God gives. He's not going to push you. And he's not going to play with you. Play with you. Lord, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful, God. I'm grateful. Hallelujah, I'm grateful. We should teach to be grateful for what God 
God has done for us. Amen. Amen. I don't know what street you came off of, mm. what country road you came down. I don't know what set you were claiming. I don't know where you were locked up at. Whether it was in the prison or with the prison of your mind, but he has delivered you to this day. I don't know if it was arrogance, if it was pride, whatever it might have been, he still looked beyond your faults and saw your need. He saw the leprosy covered, and he said, My blood covers that. Amen. I'm grateful. You don't get anything on anything that I said today. There might be some confusion about this or that, and this scripture perfect, that scripture perfect. Be grateful. Mm, yes. You know that you have a God out there My that Lord. forgives sin. My Lord. My Lord. If you're out there in our live stream, I would ask you. Take a reflection in your life and know that Jesus saves. The song says he will pick you up, he will turn you around, he will place your feet on solid ground. Amen. Jesus saves. Life will begin anew. It will happen immediately. Let down the road, but immediately. Lord, I need you. Have mercy on me. Amen. I'm a drug addict. I'm an alcoholic. I'm a liar. I'm a fornicator. I'm an adulteress. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I'm sick in my body. I don't know what tomorrow or the next second holds. Lord, will you save me? I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes, Lord. Yes. Will you save me? Mm. My love. Well, I confess that I have faults. I have faults. And that I need you. Will you save me? And we believe that we declare that in this very hour, that very moment that you say that, that God will save you. Amen. Yes, amen. He will save you. Get yourself up. Go to a Bible-believing church. Go to a loving church. Come to Mount Moriah. Amen. We are the loveliest church in San Diego. Amen. I'm going to keep saying that. I'm going to keep saying that. The folks going to believe that. One day they're going to walk in you. I know. Jesus is saved in this place. Yes. They're going to feel it as they come through that front door. Mm -hmm. That they're in love and Jesus is saved. Yes. Oh, yes. I didn't go away from where I wanted to go. I didn't finish where I wanted to finish. But I will come back and do it again if the Lord gives life. Amen. Amen. Mark Mariah. Folks out there, we love you. I love you. And let's walk in the calling that God has called for our lives. Amen. Call for your life. Amen. Each one of you. And love people the way that you want to be loved. Amen. In spite of. In spite of themselves. In spite of yourself. Let us be grateful Amen. to Almighty God for saving us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Can we all stand as we get ready to go into our next portion of our service? Lord, we thank you for those ten lepers that came, oh God. We thank you for them crying out for you to have mercy on them. Yes, Lord. Lord, we pray, oh God, for those that are here, Lord God, and those that are out watching us now, God, that you begin to, to minister in their lives to heal, oh God. God, teach us how to be grateful, oh God. Yeah. For the little things, for the air that we breathe, how to be grateful, oh God.
Teach us, O oh God, how to be forgiving. O oh God, teach us how to love one another. Lord, we thank you for this time. And as we go into remembering you, Lord God, keep our minds in that place of meditation, of great joy and thanksgiving, that we might serve you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and we give thanks. Amen. 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 So we're going to ask the deacons to please come down and to, to set everything up. I'm going to ask our ministers to please come down. I will be reading from the NIV, 1 Corinthians 11, chapter, verses 23 through 30. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. This is why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and reading of his holy word.
Let us not forget, Lord God, that you have called each person here. You called them by name. You knew that they would be here today, Lord God. Forgive us from our sins, oh God, and forgive those that we have sinned against, oh God. And God, be with us as we do this in remembrance of you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and we give thanks. And all the God people say, Amen. Amen.
get this feedback. All right, all right, all right. Can we thank God for all the June birthdays? And if, uh, I'm sorry? Your birthday. What about Your birthday. Your birthday. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs>